All right, so vectors are mathematical expressions for a force which have both a magnitude and a direction. And we can, as we have, represent vectors as arrows. And so for the next few videos and lectures, um, we are going to be discussing force vectors that are planar. And what I mean by that is that these force vectors will only act in a two-dimensional plane. Uh, the plane that we're all familiar with, our basics, basic x and y, uh, Cartesian coordinate plane. All of these planar vectors that we're going to study can be added together using the parallelogram law. There are many ways to denote a vector. For an example, if we wanted to denote the force P as a vector force, we could use a bold quantity P, a P with an arrow overhead, or a P with a line underneath it, or any variable. It doesn't have to be P. But for this lecture and all future lectures, I'll denote vectors with an overhead arrow. And we can represent uh, many things as vectors, uh, displacements, velocities, accelerations, and the list goes on and on. And all of these vectors can be worked with using vector algebra and, math and mathematics. There are many other physical quantities, however, that cannot be represented as vectors. Uh, these include volume, energy, area, and a whole bunch of other quantities. These quantities we'll call scalars. So let's say we have our, or we apply the force of 10 newtons onto this particle A. We can apply this force to the right, we can apply this force to the upper right, and we can apply it uh, to the left. And in fact, we can apply this force in any direction within our plane. But this isn't very useful or useful information. The neat thing about vectors is that a vector will tell us not just how much the force is being applied to an object, but at which direction that force is being applied to. A vector force acting to the right of an object is completely different from a force acting at an angle alpha above the horizontal. Scalars will only give us the number or the quantity of a force, in this case 10 newtons. The angle alpha, however, will tell us which direction the scalar force is being applied, which will turn it into a vector force. So vectors can be drawn using an arrow, we know that. So let's say that we have these two vectors, um, both in the same direction and have the same magnitude. These vectors are called equal vectors. And do note that equal vectors do not need to be applied to the same point, only that they are equal and in direction and in magnitude. Um, but now let's say that we had two more forces or two more vectors with the same magnitude, but one of these vectors was applied in the opposite direction. Let's just assume that one of these Q vectors is positive and the other one is negative. These equal and opposite vectors could be added together and the result would be zero because of their equal magnitude but opposite in or but opposite direction. And so let me explain this in a quick little example using a box. So in this example, if we had one person pulling on the box with seven newtons of force and the other pulling the box on the opposite side with the same exact force but in the opposite direction, we could intuitively see that the box would not move, right? There's seven newtons being applied to the right and there's seven newtons being applied to the left. One's pulling the box, one's pushing the box. The, the magnitude of these forces are equal, so the box is not going to move. In other words, if one person was pulling the box to the right with seven newtons of force and another person was pulling the box to the left with seven newtons of force, this box would not displace. These forces are parallel, share a common line of action, are equal in magnitude, but are opposite in direction.